Put your shield in front of the door. It's a chaotic situation, so there's a little bit of flagging going on. Let's look at the next clip. Remember, kids, training, training, training. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Shots Fired Podcast. I'm Mark Redish, and this is Kyle Schilbert. We've had several people reach out and ask us to do a breakdown of one of Donut Operator's videos. So we chose his latest video that he did, and we're going to compare our opinions to his opinion. Stay tuned. Orlando, Florida, July 12th, 2024, 3.40 p.m. The Sheriff's Department Gang Enforcement Unit have been monitoring a house, a gang house. They observed a man come out of the house, jump on a scooter, and head towards a 7-Eleven, and armed with a gun. That's right, on a scooter. Thank you so much. No problem. Boss man, you know only one of you guys could be riding on a scooter, right? No, sir, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's the law, man. All right. So, you got your ID? Hey, come here, man. Come here, dude. Yo. All right, so what we know is gang detectives were doing surveillance on a known gang house when a subject leaves the house, and they said they saw him with a gun. He gets on a scooter. Somebody else gets on the scooter with him. They ride off. They trail him, and then he goes into 7-Eleven, which is a public place, and then they decide to try and make contact with them. This is kind of sketchy with tactics. I'm not really a fan of this part. What do you think? So I agree with you. I do like the deputy goes in and tries to downplay the whole thing. He basically confronts the kids and he's like, hey, look, you guys can't ride two people on a scooter. I like that. I like he's trying to downplay it, knowing in the back of his head what he's dealing with so that he's not alerting that kid of he knows he's armed. The problem is they're in a public place. There's other customers in there. And when the deputy tried to downplay it, the kid turned around and started digging into his waistband. Well, that that's a problem, obviously, because one, the deputy knows he's armed. Two, the kid now knows that he's about to get in trouble. We don't know if he's trying to get that gun out, throw it, he doesn't want to get caught with it, use it against the cops, who knows. But if you look at the, the scenario in and of itself, I don't necessarily like the idea of contacting that kid inside the gas station. There's other customers in there. You know he's armed with a gun. I, I like the idea of maybe allowing him to do his thing in 7-Eleven, come back out and with a show of force or more, more cops swoop in on that kid as quickly as possible and just immediately gain control of him. Or you had mentioned before we recorded, like maybe follow him back somewhere. And if you had to do a surround and call out, do a surround and call out because you know he's armed, but doing it in a public place like a gas station, I'm yeah. not, a fa not a fan of that. Come here. Hey, stop, stop, stop. Stop. After the suspect ignored God knows how many commands to stop, another officer cuts him off and tries to attempt him from escaping. But that doesn't stop our scooter gangster from doing this. Hey, stop what you're doing right now. Stop. Hands up. Hands up. Hey! No, stop! Don't grab! Don't grab! Don't grab! Don't grab! Don't grab! Don't grab! Don't grab. What you saw there was the suspect turning away and grabbing a gun. Officers opened fire, then continued to struggle with the suspect and were able to get the gun away from them. Here's another slowed down version of them grabbing the gun. Stop. Hands up. It was kind of hard to see there, but the suspect grabs for his waistband, reaching for his weapon, which you can see better from the other officer's perspective here. Come here, man. Come here, dude. Yo. Come here. Hey, stop. 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 Hands up. With the suspect all shot up and disarmed, the deputies try to render first aid, and as a lot of times in these situations, he didn't make it. I've heard a lot of complaints from this video, but what a lot of people don't understand is that the suspect doesn't have to actually aim their gun at you to actually use deadly force. As of the filming of this video, the shooting is still under investigation. Okay, so what we can see here is that first officer is giving commands to this suspect with a gun, but he's not listening, and he turns around and starts to walk away and around the aisle. At this point, 
That officer is following him and still trying to give commands. But I really think, you know, he has a gun. You've got to get on that dude immediately and grab a hold of him. Like you can't let this person turn that corner out of your view. That's actually what happens. And then the other officer decides to go on the other side of the aisle, pull his gun out. And then now he's face to face with the suspect. The number one officer comes around the aisle, sees that this suspect is pulling a gun and then ultimately shoots him twice, which drops him to the ground. The two officers not working together, coming around the corner or creating a crossfire and nothing good could come from this situation with this crossfire. It's really, really risky in this situation. I really think the officer should have just jumped up and grabbed that, that suspect right away. Okay, so in the video, Donut makes a good point in that you don't have to wait for the guy to point the gun at you to use lethal force. The mere fact that he's pulling it out of his waistband in the presence of the officers, you, you don't know what he's going to do with that firearm. It does lend the officers to use lethal force, which is the option that they chose. The kid goes down. Mark mentions it. They're in a crossfire situation. You can see the one officer pulls the firearm out from the suspect's waistband. He's holding it in the air. And that's when the number one officer continues to fire uh, into the suspect, fatally wounding him. My final thoughts of this video is if you're doing surveillance on a gang house and you see somebody leave with a gun, planning goes so far and making sure that you're taking the suspect down in a safe area where there are not other citizens. I don't think taking them down inside a gas station is the best option. I would recommend following them back, setting up on a house and doing a surround and call out. My opinion is that's the safest way to go. What's your thought? Yeah, I, I, I'm along the same lines. I think if you're if you know this guy to be armed, which they did, I don't like the idea of taking someone down in a public place like that. I, like you said, the pre-planning of this and, and getting on the same page with your partners on and finding a better location to take him into custody if that's your overall goal, uh, but not doing it inside of a gas station in the middle of the day. So we're glad everything worked out. All right, let's watch the second video that Donut broke down, which is super chaotic. You got cops pointing guns at each other. You've got a hostage situation, a barricade, shots fired. It's nuts. Let's hear what Donut has to say about it. And then we're going to give you our perspective on what we think about the video. And for today's final video, we are going to head over to Florida, our favorite place around here. Specifically, we are going to be in Tampa to see a crazy ex-boyfriend and some hostages. On August 8th, a woman was walking through her apartment complex when she was spotted by her ex. She immediately gets on the phone with a detective who was handling a previous case between her and that same ex. This previous case had been between her and the suspect and some harassing calls from him. Not nice. I don't know you. Who is this? Don't come here. I'm hanging up the phone. Prank caller. Prank caller. <laughs> The officer happened to be in the area, so he rushes over to the apartment complex to make sure everything is okay, but not before the ex spots her. He pulls out a gun and fires two shots at her, missing. The ex, who just missed his two shots, forces her into an occupied apartment. That's when officers arrive and make entry. You want to holster and knock or pull the door or something? Okay, let's pick up what, what we know so far. So this lady's walking through her apartment complex and spots her ex-boyfriend. There's obviously a case going on. She ends up contacting the detective handling her case who decides that he's going to go to the apartment complex to check on her. That's a little weird. Should have been a patrol call. Nonetheless, when the female spots him, he actually sees her and fires two rounds at her. So now you're talking about an attempted homicide on her. He grabs her, pulls her into somebody else's apartment complex that's occupied with a family. Now he's holding the whole family plus his ex-girlfriend hostage. He's already shot at her twice. The video picks up with a bunch of other officers that showed up on scene. Let's talk about their tactics and how they're stacked up at the door. What do you think? So this is a, a really interesting setup and a great body cam view from this. So looking at the setup of the door, it's a left to right swing, meaning and it's outward opening. On the hinge side, you could see the alcove kind of steps out like three feet and then continues down a hallway. So that door is only going to open a quarter of the way. It's not gonna do a full half opening. On the hinge side, generally you would have an officer with a shield and then somebody else covering them with the, with the rifle. And in this situation, they have that, but the officer is right up next to the hinge on the door, which is really not tactical in any way. And all he's doing is covering himself because the door, if it were to open, it's gonna actually smash you. And you'll see it in the video. It, it's not a great position to be standing. And then the officer behind him is further back where he's not being protected by any anyone. He's only covering himself and he's pointing a rifle towards the door. Now his position is really far back. So if he were to actually have to engage or the officer up at the front on the hinge side were to move, you would be immediately in that crossfire. I don't like this setup whatsoever. I think what should happen is the shield person at the hinge side should actually come back 
and move right on the edge of the corner in the hallway and then have that rifleman right on the person's shoulder holding in on that side. Now let's focus on the body camera that we're watching with the officer that has the handgun out on the door handle side. I don't really like this setup either because it looks like every officer is trying to edge out where they actually have a view of the door. They should be stacked up on the door and out of view if the door opens. And the third officer who want the handgun is basically ineffective at this point. He's so far back and he's pointing his handgun way up towards the door. And again, same with the other setup. If those officers were to move a little bit or something were to happen, you're not going to be able to take a, a, an actual shot that direction. He should have his gun down and not be in that position. You need to be fanned out on the wall side, like almost running the walls. Put your shield in front of the door. It's a chaotic situation, so there's a little bit of flagging going on. Let's look at the next clip. Remember, kids, training, training, training. There's quite a bit of flagging going on. Anyways, officers are getting concerned for the safety of the woman who is being held hostage right now, so they decide to finally make entry. Until they see this. He's there. Tell the police. We gotta go, guys. We gotta go, guys. Guys, we gotta go. Come, come. That son of a bitch barricaded himself in. Now we have a barricaded suspect. Those are no fun at all. Luckily, the suspect only had a couple of minutes to do his master plan of barricading himself in someone else's apartment, and it's not very effective. Run, run, push through. Run, run, come in here. Come in here. Come in here. Who's in the house? Who's in the house? Take your time, take your time. Someone make contact with the black female detective. After that, the woman runs safely to the officers. They learn that there are more people inside of the apartment, so they get to work to clear the barricades around the apartment. All right, let's pause the video here for just a second. So Donut actually points out the fact that these guys are flagging each other. We just discussed that. But more so when the officers decide to make entry into the apartment, like Donut said, they're worried about the hostage and the ex-girlfriend inside. They are presented with a new problem in that now this guy has barricaded the front door. Here's where things I think start to become a little bit more chaotic. You've got one officer in the very back of the stack yelling that they got to go, they got to go. That's putting pressure on all the other cops because they're trying to figure out how to defeat the barricade. The guys with the shield are, are confused. They're trying to still hold the shield up. There's confusion all over the place. No one's really taking control and more cops just start yelling things and no one is really on the same page of music here. So I think that's when things become more chaotic. Someone needed to take a step back, assess the problem and how are they going to defeat this new problem that they've come across, which is the barricade. We watch a lot of videos and in this one, when you're talking about all these officers starting to yell, I actually feel like I get more anxiety and more hyped up listening to them versus other videos where they're not as loud and yelling like it's more discipline now i want to point out on the door handle side number two officer the one with the rifle you could see he's actually pointing his rifle up towards the ceiling and then the officer's body camera with the handgun is pointing at the door so i don't know what number two is even doing he's not even ready and then on the hinge side the officer i was initially talking about was back further He's actually hyper-focused trying to get an actual sighted alignment on something. And then you can see his vest isn't even Velcroed shut. It's just flapping open. There's just really no discipline, no roles specific in this of who has what responsibility. There's really no discipline in this. Okay, so the more we watch this video, the officers have defeated this, uh, like Donut says, haphazard barricade that the suspect puts up but it just gets to get more confusing and, and more chaotic as this thing goes. So you got one officer who's wanting to push in and go quickly, and you have another officer who you heard say, take your time, take your time. Here's the thing. If these guys truly thought, or they're dealing with a hostage rescue, once that door's been bar uh, breached or barricaded, you're going in and you've, you've got you to gotta go quick and you've, your presence is already known. The suspect knows that you're there. This isn't something that you're gonna just hold back and take your time on. Now, I understand they're trying to figure out where this guy is. You can hear there's kids in the background. They're trying to get the kids out of the house. One of them says that the suspect is in the back bedroom, uh, which good on them. But as the officers are moving through this apartment full of debris and furniture, they have the two guys with the shields up front. I do like that. My only suggestion would be, and we talk a lot about it in our class, is if you're going to have your shield guy and that's your role and responsibility, your rifle guy should be right over the top of the shoulder of the shield guy 
And in this video, the deputy's trying to like put his rifle over top of the deputies. And he's trying to get some type of sight picture down that hallway. Now I understand he's trying to cover the shield guys, but there is a better and more effective way to do that uh, without going over top of your partners. Now we're sitting here debriefing this, this whole call is super chaotic. And we understand that. Look, we've been involved in situations like this, but if you can rehearse this stuff with your patrol teams, your SWAT team, practice this stuff, go over scenarios, you're gonna be so much better off in the moment rather than trying to figure it out the day of the incident that you're in the middle of in real life. It's just not gonna work out for you. And I think this is a good example of that. Trying to figure it out as you go just doesn't necessarily work. Hey, you, God damn it, Donut. Can you please use something else other than the sound of a duck quack to mute the sound of gunshots? <laughs> What we saw right there was a suspect firing two shots at officers and the officers returning fire at the suspect. Seeing as how this is a barricaded suspect situation, we know there's one suspect, but you still gotta clear everything. Officers then realize that there was only one suspect in the apartment. They pull out and activate the local SWAT team. SWAT ends up finding the dude's body in a closet from a self-deleting gunshot wound. All right, so these officers are still pushing forward. Multiple gunshots are being heard from inside the apartment and they do a good job. They make sure that everybody and these kids are out of the apartment and then they recognize that he's probably the only one back there in that room. And then they end up making their way and pulling out and then contacting the SWAT to have them come and resolve the situation. That's probably the best plan right here is to pull out. Nice work. Okay, so for me overall, that is a horrible call to be involved in. A lot of moving parts. It's super chaotic. We understand that. There's a ton of value though in watching videos like this, breaking it down and just learning. That's it. So from my point of view, I thought the officers ultimately did a good job getting in there. They got the kids out, priority of life, and they backed out, called the SWAT team when shot, shots were fired. So well done. And that's all I have to say about this video. I think my final thoughts on this is discipline, knowing what your roles and responsibilities are and how to really set up on a door if you're gonna make entry. Training is so important. If you're gonna set up on a door, make sure you're doing it correctly where you're actually being utilized for the benefit of the other officers. And then once you're making entry and moving through, you need to know if you're gonna to continue to push through because it's a hostage rescue or you're gonna methodically move slowly. In this case, they actually made the decision to pull out once they heard gunshots. So smart move on that, let SWAT come in and handle it. They have time, they can talk this person out. So overall, nice work pulling out. Thank you, Donut Operator, for putting the video together. And turns out we did agree with his assessment. We just added a little bit more, but thank you overall for putting the videos together. You do a great job, and we'll see you guys on the next video. See ya.